Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'm going to be showing you how to upload a file to Google Storage using the Google Storage API. Essentially, what we're gonna be doing is submitting a image file through a HTML form, sending it to our Express server, and our Express server will upload it to Google Storage by the Google Storage Node.js client libraries. So if that's something you're interested in, strap in and we'll get into it. All right guys, so I've just opened up a new empty folder in Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna open up a new terminal here and just say npm in it. We'll just continue through these. All right, so from here, what we're gonna want is we would need to get express. So I'll just say npm i express. Um, we're also gonna use multi today because I wanna use that for handling the, the file upload. So I'm just gonna say npm i express multi. And we'll also need to get the um, the Google Storage uh, package in as well, or npm packages in as well. Um, so I'll just say npm i at Google Cloud Storage. Okay, so that'll take a second to download. In the meantime, we're gonna create now our index.js, which is where our server's gonna live, our express server's gonna live. And we'll just require express here. So I'll say const express equals require express. And we'll define our port here, const port equals 8080. And then we can turn this on by saying app.listen. And then I'll just turn this on and just say node index. And there we go, server started on port 8080. All right, cool. So from here, uh, basically what I wanna do now is just serve our index.html when somebody comes to the root of our application. So I'm just gonna say app.get root and we'll say um, rec res, request response. Oops. And then we're just gonna say res.send file uh, index.html, which we haven't we, we haven't built yet, but we'll do that right now. So index.html. All right, so I just wanna make sure this works now. So if I go to a browser and I come here and we'll go to localhost 8080 at the root and we cannot get that. Why can't we get that? Ah, oh, because we haven't restarted our server. Which reminds me actually, I'm gonna install NodeMon so we don't have to keep restarting and refreshing it all the time. It'll just do it itself. So MPI, npm install NodeMon. Great, and now we can just say up here, I will create a new script in our package.json dev and we'll say NodeMon index. And now we can say npm run dev. Now NodeMon's just gonna keep watching our server file for any changes. <clears throat> okay, so from here, I think we can go back now to our browser. We can try to get this. Path must best be absolute. Ah, yes, okay, sorry. We do need to send the full path, it doesn't know. So to do that, uh, we can just say der name plus index or HTML. I think that should work. If we go back to here. There we go. All right, so now that we're getting our index.html file, um, I basically want to build the form out so that we can sort of just have a user upload something from here. And then we'll we'll post that to our endpoint. Right, so in our index.html, I'm just gonna have an input here. And it's gonna accept the file. And we're gonna call the name image file. All right, so now I'm just gonna say it can accept images and only images of JPEG or JPG. So if I just save this now, go back to our browser, refresh that, um, we should see here that I can only accept .jpg files, right? And there's a handsome picture of me right there. <laughs> um, so we've created our input, so now we just need a button uh, which will submit uh, the image that we upload here. So I'm just gonna say button and we'll say submit. All right, so now we've got our input ready and the submit button there. Uh, we just need some JavaScript now to handle the submit button and post it to the endpoint on our Express server, which we haven't created yet, but uh, we'll do this side, the client side first. So if we create now a new uh, JavaScript file, we'll just say submit.js. 
first off, what we need to do is actually get a reference to this this submit button. So I should have given this an ID, sorry. So let's say submit button. And now we can add a event listener to our submit button. So if we say document.get element by ID, submit button, and then dot add event listener, click, and it's gonna take in a function. And it can be anonymous because we don't really need a defined function for this one. I do want to just copy in some code here, which I've got on the side. And I'm going to have a GitHub repository, so you can actually just copy this yourself if you want. But basically what this code is doing is just giving us a unique ID for our image for when we upload it to Google Storage. All right, now, so building on our submit function, uh, basically now we have to build the form data, which we're going to post to our endpoint or our, our express server. Um, so to do this, I'm just going to say, let post ID equal your ID v4. And we're going to use this in the image name itself. So if I say let input lm equal document dot get element by ID image file. And I don't think I created the ID for this yet. So I'll just do this right now before I forget. There we've got the name, but we need the ID. Are oh, the IDs over here. Image file. <clears throat> so I save that. So input elem equals document dog element by ID image file. And then we want the actual file in the input. So, and now because I want to change the file name, I don't want to have the original name so I can keep track of um, IDs and stuff like that. We need to actually turn our file into like a blob and then recreate the file uh, with our own file name. And so to do this, we can just say, uh, we'll say let blob equal file dot slice zero file dot size and we'll say it's an image of jpeg and now we can say new file equals new file taking in the blob and now we want to exp uh, give it the name so we'll say post dot id or post id and we'll say post and dot jpeg and then we just need to define the type here as well again. So now the type is going to be an image of JPEG. All right, so this is basically going to get the file from our input element. We're going to basically recreate the file and give it this name. So it's going to be the post ID underscore post and dot JPEG. All right, so now we wanna go let form data equal new Oops, form data. And we just need to append our file to our form data. So I can say form data dot append. And now we want to call this image file. And we'll say new file, just like that. Cool. All right. So now we've got everything we need to send with the post. We actually have to make the request itself. So I'll just say fetch. And the endpoint is going to be. Uh, we'll say upload and we're going to give it an object and we'll say the method is post and the body is going to be our form data all right let's just save that and we want to do some dot thens so we'll say response and we'll just say res dot text so i'll just send back a text response and then dot then uh, we'll just console log the output or the, the response back from our server. So just say that for now. Okay, so that is everything we need to do on the client side, basically. So we'll go back to our uh, so we'll go back to our Express server and just build out the endpoint there for the upload. All right, so now just back on our Express server index.js file, uh, we need to bring in some of the dependencies that we installed earlier, and then we can go ahead and build out the posting. Uh, the slash upload route. So I'm just going to say const storage, oops, uh, equals require, and we want Google Cloud Storage, just like that. And then to instantiate our Google Storage client on our Express server, we'll say const storage equals new storage. And we can pass in a project ID, which is an expected parameter, and also the key file name, which is also another expected parameter. And we haven't got those yet, but we will. But I'll just define these up here. So I'll say let project ID 
equal blank for now and let key file name equal blank for now. Now these two variables are going to come from Google Cloud itself. Uh, so the project ID is the project that the ID of the project that you're working in. And the key file name is actually a key that we need to get um, from Google Cloud when we create some credentials and stuff. So uh, we'll do that soon, but I just want to instantiate the client, build out the route, and then we're going to uh, bring in our stuff from Google Cloud that we need to at the end. All right, so now we also need to bring in Malta. So we'll say require Malta. And we can say down here, const Malta, uh, just instantiate Malta. And we'll say storage. Oops. We want to say storage and Malta memory storage. And what we're doing this is because uh, I don't want to save the files on our Express server. So if we're chewing out resources and storage and space like that, I just want to be able to send the memory stream to our Express server and then upload it directly to Google Cloud. So we don't have to download the file and then send it. We can just sort of uh, pipe it to Google Storage, right? Uh, we wanted to find some limits. And now this is going to be about file size. And you can change this as you want, but if we say five times 24 times 24, oh sorry, five times 1024 times 1024, uh, this is going to have no files larger than five megabytes, but you can change this as you need. And then we just need one more variable as well for our Google storage, which is going to be the bucket definition to which we're going to be uploading into. So I'll just say const bucket equals storage dot bucket and we need to define this still. So I'm just gonna leave it blank. So I'll just say here to be defined. So we're gonna come back to these three variables, which are all gonna be in, uh, provided to us in Google Cloud or once we go there. Um, so we'll just continue on now with the building of our posting route. So for anyone that posts to our slash upload route, we're gonna use Malta to upload a single file. So we can say Malta single, and this takes in a string uh, which is actually the name of the file uh, that we sent in the post request. So if I go back to my submit.js, not the name of the file rather, sorry, but the name of the value. So if I look at this form data.append, uh, we can see here the name, the name value here. So our name is called image file, which is why we're going to use image file in here. So I'm just gonna wrap this in a try catch as well. And then if there's any errors, we're just gonna do res.send error and also just here have a status as well. Okay, so when we try to upload the file, basically what we wanna do is say if there's a file, so uh, if there's a file on the request object, uh, we want to basically now create a new blob equals bucket file dot file. And we wanna pass in the request dot file dot original name, which is going to be our post ID that we created in our submit.js. And now we just need to open up a stream and write to it. So if I say const blob stream equals blob.create, oops, uh, write stream is what we want. And now we can say blob stream dot on, and when it finishes, it's going to do the callback that we list here. So if I just do that, so I'll say res status 200 and send success, right? And down here, I'm also just gonna say blob stream dot end rec dot file dot buffer. All right, so I think we can save this off now. And let's see what we have here. A bucket name is needed to use cloud storage. Okay, all right, so now we have to go to Google Cloud and get some of the pieces that we need. Uh, so the storage bucket that we're gonna be using and also the project ID and the key file name. So let's go to Google Cloud now and get all these bits and pieces so we can actually put it into our application and then start running this, right? So going back to your browser, uh, if you go to your Google Cloud project, you can get your project ID from the main dashboard here. So for me, this is that one there. So I will just go copy this and put it in there like that. And the key file name is something we need to actually download. So if you go to your Google Cloud dashboard, and you type in credentials. So from the credential screen, uh, you need to have a Surface account so we can download the JSON key file or the PEM key file. Uh, so as you can see here, I've got two Surface accounts. 
Uh, but if you don't have a service account, you can just go create credentials, service account, right? And then once you've got your service account, you just want to go to uh, within it. And then we're going to go, I think there's a key file here we can download or something. So we go keys, add key, create a new key. And then you're going to create that. So I'll just create it now as well. And it downloaded that, right? So now from here, I'm just going to literally drag and drop it into our application folder, just like that. All right, sweet. So now we put our key in our directory. Uh, we basically need to just reference this key. And we can just literally do that by saying, I'll just rename this actually, so my key. And I'll just say here, my key, just like that. So now we've got our key file and we've also got the project ID. Now the only thing that's missing is our storage bucket. So let's go back to Google Cloud and we're going to create a new storage bucket. So I'm gonna to go to our dashboard and you should see it down here on the side. If not, just type it into the top. So storage and we can create a new bucket here. And I'm going to say Google storage tutorial, my bucket name. I can't stop with Google, that's great. So I'll just say, I'll say storage tutorial, just like that. That bucket name is taken, okay. How about Dan's storage, I'll do that. All right, that one's free, so I'm just gonna leave the region in the US, I'm not too fast, and continue through all these. And we do want uniform access control. So this basically means that uh, the access is defined at a bucket level and not at a file level. If you want fine-grained, you can kind of define each uh, the permissions on each individual file, but I just want the permissions to remain the same across the whole bucket, so I'm going to keep it as uniform. And we can create that now. All right, so once you've got your bucket created, I'm going to actually just copy the name here and paste it into our storage.bucket. So I think this is all looking pretty good now, so let's actually try to upload something uh, from our index.html form. So I'm just gonna save all this off. And actually lastly as well, I just wanna have a console log here just to make sure I can see that we're coming in here. So I was saying, made it to slash upload. And in here, console log, file found, trying to upload, just like that. All right, so let's go back to our front end and just refresh this to make sure we're getting the latest file. Choose a file and we'll upload this image of free guy. Submit it, let's see what happens here. So I'm not getting any errors. <laughs> so it looks like nothing's happening there at the moment. So let's see why that is. Oh, I know why it is because we haven't even referenced our client side JavaScript here. So let's say script source equals uh, what do we call it? Submit JS, right? Cool. All right, let's try this again. Refresh this, choose a file, and submit. Still getting nothing. Ah, oh, sorry, I, I know what the reason is. <laughs> it's because we're still not actually serving this through our Express application. Uh, so we need to actually serve static files from our Express application, of course. So if I go back to our server here, and I just want to say at the top, we'll say something like app.use express.static. And we're also going to need path now as well. Um, const path equals require path. I'm just going to say const source equals path.join their name and we'll call our public folder which we're going to serve views right so in here express.static passing in source and now we need to create a new folder called views and I'm just going to put the index.html in there and also the submit.js in there now when anybody comes to the root of our application, uh, where we have it down here, I just wanna say 
uh, it's going to be source now instead. So source plus index.html. So I'll just make sure this all works now. Come back to the top. Refresh this. All right, we can still get our web page, which is great. Close this off. Choose the file. And we've got the file there. And it's going to try send it now. All right, so now what's happened? So it's tried to get the my key, but it couldn't find my key. And I think I know why, because I think I didn't say my key.json, so this has to be my key.json. Let's try that again. Submit it. All right, so it's made it to the upload file found trying to upload. So it's in here somewhere but it hasn't fully sent it yet, so. All right, so I'm just gonna refresh this. And I also just wanna say here as well, maybe on our if statement, uh, just in case the rec.file isn't there or something. So I'll say else throw error with image. Save this off. Let's try this again one more time. All right, so it's going into here, file found trying to upload. And I'm going to guess it's probably stuck in here somewhere. Um, so let's just check our console actually and what do we have uh, oh wait a second <laughs> we've got success so I think that's actually all good I think um, uh, because I didn't even write here so we'll say console.log success so so we can actually see something on the server so let's just go back here and we'll resubmit this so it's file found trying to upload success it's great and we get a success response back as well. All right, so that's looking pretty good. So if we go to our storage now, our bucket, give this a refresh. We should see now three items in here, I think, with three unique post IDs. And there we go. We can see three unique posts, all with our image. Uh, there we go. There he is. All right, so now lastly, just to wrap everything up, uh, we want to just be able to get the images that we posted to our Google storage. And to do this, we're gonna to need to change some of the permissions on the bucket itself. So as you can see here, if I go to permissions for this bucket, uh, there's no public access. Um, and so what we wanna do is just basically change this so that everybody can read from this bucket, right? So if I add principles or add permissions, sorry, and I go all users, and we can select a role and we'll say store legacy object reader all right and i'll just also add bucket reader as well just like that all right allow public access now you'll notice if we go back to our objects uh, in our bucket that we should now have a public url which we can copy go here and you can see we can we can view our image from here now as well so basically then what we need to do is do a get request on our bucket, get all the post IDs, and then just append it um, to this URL basically over here, right? So that's what we're gonna do. So we'll just go back to our client side first. And we basically wanna do a get request now to our Express server, which will return a bunch of post IDs. And then we can sort of loop through and create some uh, image elements on the front end. Uh, so basically here, I'm just gonna say, so basically now I just want to chain our uh, upload to basically uh, call a function which will get all the all the posts after we've uploaded. So from here I'm just going to say function, um, and now here we're going to do another fetch URL, and we can actually leave. Uh, we don't need to change any of these methods because we're just doing a get. So. And this is actually going to be upload, not URL, because we already know the URL. So um, I could say dot then uh, res again res dot JSON this time, and then dot then we'll console log. Uh, sorry, we'll just console log this again. All right. So now with that in place, uh, let's actually go back to our server and define uh, the slash upload path for a get request. Okay. So let's go to index.js. And we'll just go above here, app.get slash upload. And we can say rec request response. Uh, so const files equals await 
bucket uh, dot get files just like that and we can say now res dot send files ah and we get await is only valid in the async function so I'm just gonna say up here async so save this off now if I go back to our front end all right, so now when we refresh the page, just make sure that we get the new uh, submit.js code that we put in. We're going to select the file, and I'll put this one in here, so the city. Now if I go submit, let's put this up. We get a success back, and now we're also getting the array back as well. So in here, we've got uh, a couple of things that we've uploaded now already. And looking what we can see now in this array, which is uh, basically each object in the bucket. Uh, primarily what we want is the ID, right? Because we already know the base URL, which is actually provided to us here. Um, but we're really after the ID. So if we go now to our client side, uh, JavaScript, we can say in here, uh, we can now do a for loop on uh, this response y equal to zero y is less than x dot length and it will say y plus plus and in here we're basically going to for each element in the array uh, create a new html image element and we're going to set the source attribute to the url uh, that is provided to us so if we just say document i will say const new image equals document dot create element image whoops image and we'll say new image dot set attribute source and this is going to be equal to uh, x x y this is going to be equal to uh, the element that we're iterating through's uh, storage dot base id plus I think a slash plus x y dot bucket dot id okay uh, we're basically iterating through each element and in there we need the storage uh, dot base url and we're concatenating that with a forward slash and then also the bucket dot id which is this here so i think that's pretty much it did i get the naming wrong there is it base id or base url base url so that's what we want there, just copy that. And then we're going to add this element uh, into, uh, into a div on our index.html, which we haven't defined yet. So I'll just say images, just like that. Now in here, dot append child, new image, just like that. All right, so let's give this another shot. Refresh the page and we'll get me again why not submit it bonds what do we get cannot read properties of undefined reading base url all right so let's see what went wrong here i might just console log x again while we're here but that still uploaded it right okay so let's try again refresh this uh, we haven't got a file picked so pick another one submit it All right, let's see what we're getting here. So we've got a bunch of things here. I'm actually gonna move this function just to be called uh, on page load so we don't have to keep uploading stuff all the time. So I'll just do this like that. And we'll say function load posts. And here we can do this like that. Just get rid of those two brackets. All right, so do that, and then we'll say here, load posts, right? All right. And then I think in here, we'll just go on load equals load posts. All right, so now at least we don't have to keep submitting stuff every time we uh, want to check this out. All right, let's see what we get. Got a bunch of items here, and it's having trouble reading this array. Ah, uh, my bad. Okay. So it looks like it's a nested array. So I think now if we do like this, x0, this should work, I think. So refresh this. 
and now you can see we're getting each individual thing there but I haven't put it down here so it's not gonna work yet and that is what we want just like that all right let's refresh the page and there we go we're getting something now all right so we'll just um, go to our Google storage over here if I get this to refresh I've got a bunch of things in here now but this is probably just the easiest solution I think so if we just go to the public URL here because I know that we've got this part here I don't think we need that bit actually so let's try this now instead go back here refresh the page so it looks like it's pulling this bucket ID from somewhere else maybe we just do dot ID so okay that looks like it's working now um, it's got at least one of them but I think we want to set this attribute so that it's not so big maybe all right, so we're getting one of our things, but we're still not getting all of them. That's because it's only going through this one here. All right, let's refresh that. I think we should now get everything. Hey, there we go. All right, cool. All right, guys, there you have it. So it took us a little bit to get towards the end there, um, but got full functionality of submitting something to Google Storage and also retrieving uh, anything from Google Storage as well. So I hope you guys learned something today. If you want the code for this, all the codes are going to be uh, on my GitHub, which I'll leave the link to the repo in the description below. So if you want, you can just sort of, you know, copy it into your own, uh, your own editor and stuff and mess around with it there. In upcoming videos, I'm going to be releasing a, basically a series, uh, which is kind of covering uh, full stack development from the database uh, to the front end and to the API layer as well. Uh, so that's coming shortly in the next coming weeks. Um, if you don't want to miss out on content just like this and those future videos, don't forget to subscribe. All right, thanks guys.